We're ramblers, we're gamblers, we're wild buckaroos And we come from the country where they eat kangaroos We eat when we're hungry and we drink when we're dry And if whiskey don't kill us, we'll drink till we die Oh, we're as free as the breeze What's to stop us and why? We can do as we please Open road, open sky Daylight is fading, the wind soft and low Curlew is calling, the trees are aglow Where a band of old bushes on the wallaby track You can stay in your cities, we'll stay here at back Western Australia is only a province and there live just as many people as in Paris. But it covers one third of the whole continent with an area seven times as large as Germany. Far from the well-known attractions, it has remained from the mass tourism. But the initial part of the Australian continent shows us so many natural wonders and beauty that one often ends up language. Our journey starts in Darwin, the capital of neighboring Northern Territory that is hardly served by international airlines. From here it is more than 5,000 kilometers through the wild west of Australia, with spectacular wildlife and the great vast endless landscape that has preserved the pioneer spirits of the past. And we come from the country where they eat kangaroos. We eat when we're hungry and we drink when we're dry. And if whiskey don't kill us, we'll drink till we die. Oh, we're as free as the breeze. What's to stop us and why? We can do as we please. Open road, open well. After 20 hours of flight, the campsite of Tumbling Waters, about 70 kilometers south of Darwin, gives us the necessary rest and relaxation. At the latest by the onlookers, we notice that we have arrived at the other end of the world. In the camp's outdoor enclosure, there are more typical inhabitants of the fifth continent. The northern Australian freshwater crocodiles grow up to three meters. They are among the more harmless of its kind and on their menu are mainly fish, amphibians, waterfall and small mammals. They attack humans only in exceptional cases. Only five kilometers northeast, the Territory Wildlife Park gives the visitor an insight into the flora and fauna of northern territories. In its extensive ground trails, which could be used by disabled persons too, leads through the topics of woodland, wetland and monsoon forest. This allows to easily watch the animals and plants in their natural environment. Morning is calling. Daylight is falling, it touches this old mulga tree. Billabong is a term from the language of the Australian natives, the Aborigines. It means a pond or a lagoon which is only temporarily filled with water. Here we meet the Australian eyewear pelican reaching a wingspan of 2 meters 50. 
Its extensible throat pouch holds 20 liters of water. Shadows and sunbeams make patterns in forests Like seaweed, the movement of ferns A whipbird has spoken, another will answer Slowly this old planet turns Mile and myrtle, cypress and sheer Christmas bush, pyramid tree Cedar and satinwood, dogwood, iron bark, this land was once wild and free. One meter forty long is the size of the gold's guana, who also prefers the near water. A soft with the dreaming of years. Just one thing is certain, time draws no curtain. At sunset the moon will appear. The black bat, with up to one meter wingspan, feeds on nectar, flowers and fruits. During the day he hangs in the trees and does personal care. But after sunset he is active and goes searching for food. He is able to do 50 kilometers long flights. There are 1,500 species of spiders in Australia, of which 30 are considered to be toxic. But only two of them can be dangerous to humans. Life in an Australian river, from its source to its mouth. In the aquarium, you can follow the track. Rush box and paper bark, berrigan and bangalow, booby aller and turpentine tree. Red gum and cooler bar, rosewood, grevillea, this land was once wild and free. Carry hakia, mountain ash. The highlight is certainly here, this basin. It houses a three and a half meter long saltwater crocodile. The saltwater crocodiles are the largest and most dangerous of these lizards. Male animals can reach lengths of more than five meters. Their habitat are estuaries and mangrove swamps. They can also swim hundreds of kilometers in the open sea or upstream deep into the inland. In northern Australia it comes again to attacks on people leading not seldom to death. After being out on the track See the mulga trees Swaying in the breeze As the landscape drifts on by And the stony desert Seems to say Goodbye, old man, goodbye All the distant quartzite hills Stand up to wave their last farewell no matter where you chance to stray, we'll have you in our spell. I've counted 14 willy willies, 
sweeping across the plain And one called out as he passed me by We'll meet somewhere again So look around Of course they may not be missing here, wallabies. The small kangaroos belong to the fifth continent like no other animal. As the wheels go clickety-clack Another attraction of the park is the bird of prey demonstration by the park rangers in the woodland area. Well, they'll give you a few pointers so that you ID them properly in the wild. If you see them, especially if you see them flying, it's very, very obvious. They've got like lovely big white patches in the wings. And uh, when the sun shines through them, patches really, really glow. So you see a lovely dark wing and the big white patches. This one has an interesting method to open the shell and get the goodies not very easy to do whatsoever. He uses a stone as a tool and succeeds. I can just um, hear Mid in the background now. She's got her microphone on. Maybe Shannon would go and, and tell. Oh, that one just fell. But she'll give that a better strike in a moment. Now, I'd like to point out that this is instinctive behavior. It's something that this bird has actually um, been born with the ability to do. She wasn't taught by parents, by us. No one taught her how to do this. She came into the raptor section 13 years ago as after we'd eaten our food. Now, we did actually teach her to bring back her pieces to us like this. And of course, we give her a big hefty reward each time. Our next destination is a national park which was named after Frederick Henry Litchfield, director of the Finnish expedition that opened in 1864 in South Australia to cross the continent north. High house termit holes mark the entrance of the park which is dominated by savannah and many waterfalls. A creek meanders through the eucalyptus forest. Soon it is clear why it is called the Bewley Rock Holes. About 50 natural bars here invite you to cool off and splash around. The sandstone plateau of the tabletop range has been cut over by several rivers within millennia. At the border of the rocks, waterfalls tumble in the depths like the Florence Falls. They are a popular destination for locals and tourists. A short trail leads to the Tolma Falls, pouring over high steps into a narrow gorge. Swimming is prohibited here, because in the numerous caves of the cliff live populations of two endangered bat species. The easily accessible Wenji Falls are a major attraction in Litchfield National Park. They feed a lake where you can swim. In former days, women of Aboriginal made pilgrimage for their fertility. He applies them as a sacred place. On the plateau above the falls, it is much more quiet. Again, we find black bats in the trees.
Over several small streams that flow to the falls, the path leads back to the parking place. Leaving the National Park, a short detour on the Stewart Highway and Road Dorrit is worth to do and leads to the Robin Falls. Also, the trucks in the north and west of Australia are of extraordinary proportions. This road train supplies the remote regions and are with three or more trailers often over 50 meters long. And not always the trucks are controlled by powerful male hands. In Nidmilak National Park, a little bit north of the town of Catherine, there are the Edith Falls. Now they have their original Aboriginal name Leilin again, which is not easy to say for Europeans. A series of waterfalls fill a lake, which is surrounded by palm trees and eucalyptus trees and palms, inviting us for swimming. On some trails you can explore the diverse flora and fauna of the National Park. So very old, the story hides in the dark untold, in some far dim ancestral hour, there is the root of our Is the strength we make, the strength we have, is the strength we take, given us down from the long gone years, cleansed in the salt of others' tears. Before we start to Western Australia, we will visit the Mataranka homestead. At the Rainbow Spring, pumps bring 30 million liters of water per day in a thermal pool, hiding in a forest between paper bark trees and living stonia palms. The crystal clear water has a constant temperature of 34 degrees centigrade. The place is very well known and here you are rarely alone. On the near campsite, parrots benefit from dripping taps and the crumbs of the guests.
Sometimes a curious wallaby is watching the campers. But the manly lights in the Sydney lights and the bluffs as the heads were seen. And the manly beach was the channel then and the captain steered with three. 500 million years ago, extensive limestone caves with beautiful stalactites and stalagmites were formed near Catherine. By establishing of the Katakata Caves Nature Park, one of them was made available to the public. Katakata kata means many stars, so the numerous embedded crystals are meant, illuminating in the low light on the cave walls. The well-built trial leads us about 300 meters into the cave. Sometimes one suspects on the top of the cave fluttering inhabitants. There are the rare orange horseshoe and ghost bats. It seemed her fate to be sold and stripped, broken by the winter gale. On the Victoria Highway, we are going west now. Soon at the roadside, mighty baobab trees appear. To see what a tug could do. The four ton anchors they laid to sea in the waves and wind and the rain. Three kilometers in front of the border, between the Northern Territory and Western Australia, we reach the Keep River National Park. He belongs to the territory of Meriwang and the Gadjarong Aborigines, who have lived here for more than 25,000 years. Tall bamboo grass and bizarre limestone formations dominate the landscape. The rocks are volcanic in origin and very old. Like blood appears the leaked resin of the paper bark trees. Black sky hit the stars. The shoreman worked at the jumping winch, crew at the capstan bars to see. In the park, there is a small friendly camp. And a head came round for a fathom's length, for a mighty he was there. A sumptuous dinner is now on our plan because of crossing into Western Australia does not allow greater stock of food. As part of the ongoing defense against fruit flies, transmitting diseases on fruit trees, no fruits and vegetables are allowed to be brought across the border. This also applies to honey, earth and animal fur. So at best eat all fresh food before. And the crocus say when a man is down with a shrug and a no all glance. He'll never get out of the gutter again, he's done with every chance. But we'll haul and heave on the block and sheave, way beaten and black rock hemmed. We'll sail with cargoes that they'll buy when the ships are all condemned. We'll haul and heave on the block and sheave, way beaten and black rock hemmed. We'll sail with cargoes that they'll buy. The officials at the border are extremely friendly. After a brief inspection of the vehicle, they welcome us in Western Australia. We have reached the Kimberleys, the north of Western Australia. Due to the uncommon time zone in the Northern Territory, the clocks must be set back by one and a half hour. Covering an area of 740 square kilometers, the Ord River was dammed to Lake Argyle. The name comes from the former Outback Cattle Ranch Argyle Downs, which is now lost in the floods. The agricultural benefit is controversial. Cotton, sugarcane and rice were planted, but soon eaten away by a mass of insects. Today there are beans, millet and fruits and the booming fishing industry. About 90 islands are breeding grounds for the 20,000 freshwater crocodiles in the lake. So, for swimming, not well suited. 
but he is an excellent habitat for the majority of Australia's bird species. Immediately before the town Kananara is the Hidden Valley National Park, which now bears his Aboriginal name again, Mirima. For the natives, here was a place of assembly. The Vata Vata bin track through the quirky pancake rocks invites you to climb. It ends at a scenic point with a beautiful view over the town and the local Cananera campsite. Kananara means place of water. With regard to our campsite, this meets the point. At 6 o'clock without warning, the water spray started, and at least now many persons know why large areas were on the court free of tents. A short detour leads us to the nearby Zebra Rock Gallery. Here is a sales area where the owner Noel Hackett and his team show their productions out of the rare zebra stone, which is only found in this area. In the workshop next door, you can watch the production. Take it or leave it, but we just can't grieve life away. For a low price for admission, you can get a bag of stale bread, which can be used on the dock at the river to attract the catfish. My dad was no rich man, a gravel and ditch man was he. No cloth on the table, but we knew what it was to be free. With me battered old squeeze box, me treasured old fiddle and bow. I kept the pace lively, played any tune they might know. I've shifted through polkas, berserkers and waltzers galore. When a set dance was done, the crowd always cried out for more. I've sung and I've played up and down the long merry years. Jig through misfortune, tiptoed at times through some tears. With me battered old squeeze box, me treasured old fiddle and bow. I've kept the pace lively, played any tune they might know. Take it Just off the road, we found the Great Wall. Prominent white quartz layers have resisted erosion and create the appearance of an impressive man-made structure. Me dad was no rich man, a gravel and ditch man was he. No cloth on the table, but we knew what it was to be.
Similarly impressive but clearly animal origin, however, are the many termite holes. I've kept the pace lively, played any tune they might know With me battered old squeeze box, me treasured old fiddle and bow I kept the pace lively, played any tune they might know Okay, before we go any further, I'd like to get your tents on the left-hand side of us. They've got these other vessels sitting here, and they're actually hooked up to our pulley system. You can see the ropes in the background. 350 million years ago, a tropical sea covered the Kimberleys. Corals built a large reef of 1,000 kilometers length and 20 kilometers width. Just north of Fitzroy Crossing divides the river of the same name, this reef, and forms the Geiki Gorge. He's the most visited park in the Kimberleys, probably because he is easily to be reached by normal cars. Taking it directly across the river. You see up in front of us, just to the left a little, the big rock face in the back of it. Now the slowest runs down, it will shave the rocks by a very small margin, slightly shaving the surface. Up to 30 meters high, the rocks arise at the shore. How high the water level is sufficient during the rainy season, one can identify by the white color. The canyon walls are full of fossils, and paleontologists get invaluable insights into the age of Devonian. The numerous freshwater crocodiles on the rocks enjoying the sun are hardly disturbed by the passing boats. Our boat driver doesn't get tired of telling stories about the canyon. Talk to your brother The remains were collected. If he's been initiated, it'll be painted up in red ochre. If it's still a boy, we painted up in white ochre. Uh, there's email where you bought your tickets, there's a Dungeon Heritage Cruise Bay, and there's a painting that perfectly illustrates the story of the old man's spirit linked with the white rock. The mic, the sun's in it. Brought to the background to get introduced to our promised wife or wives. I've been there five times already. I still haven't worked it out. Oh, what a feeling. Oh, bugger. Standing on top of this desert outcrop With these ancient stones and bleached old bones I'm a man alone I'm at home right here with nothing to fear Lost my white skin in this moot windy wind My brother the bird, my sister the tree Sang a song of the earth Better suited for swimming than the Geiki Gorge is this wonderful place to stay for a night beside the highway. The place is also in the zone of the prehistoric coral reef. Decades ago, as a military base was built in the north, the necessary stones were broken here. The incoming groundwater then formed an excavator lake. Since he has no incoming flow, here are no fish and no crocodiles. I was born in the hill, my spirit is still a part of this land. The formation of the former reef is still visible, also the fossilized coral in the rocks. On an old vacant lot at the edge of the town, the old folks had come, a bottle go round, a circle of mirth. Top of 
of this desert outcrop with these ancient stones and bleached old bones. I'm a man alone. I'm at home right here, nothing to fear. Lost my white skin in this moot windy wind. The discovery of the world's largest seashell, Pintada Maxima, in 1883 led to the founding of the pearling town of Broome in Roebuck Bay. Pearls and nacre, in that time the buttons were made from, have made the small port quickly famous. That time the harbour covered 80% of the global nacre needs. Hundreds of boats brought the mostly female pearl divers out to the shell banks. The colorful mixture of Asian fishermen, Chinese traders and Japanese pearl divers created a scene that one can still imagine today. An impressive example of this is the Japanese cemetery with 600 graves from this period. The red cow died and the Hereford bull Two figures more to cancel Dan Corser and took a bullock skull, rode on it with a pencil. Here I lie on the Birdsville track, driven to death by old Scotty Mac. point is the southwest corner of the spit of land of Broome. Here the colorful rocks build bizarre shapes. Around about six months later Here I lie like an old tin can Kick down the track by drove and tan Thus drove a joke With the transfer of an underwater cable leading to Java 1889, the telegraphic connection to the pearl markets was completed. Forty years later, with the global economic crisis and the upcoming of artificial pearls, the pearl boom of Broome was over. But the white sandy beaches and the turquoise waters made the place into a tourist magnet. Cable Beach is the most beautiful beach of the city and famous for its sunsets. What they wrote on a bullock skull A bullock could write on there
Long life to old Waylon of waiting a while. Good luck to his children and wife. They gain all the pleasure and gladness that come and miss all the worries of life. They never Halfway between Broome and Port Hedland, the 80 mile beach is extending over a length of 140 kilometers. The Great Northern Highway runs parallel to the beach here, so we can reach this wonderful piece of untouched nature easily. The gates on the boundary fences are down and buried in rubbish and dust. The white ants and weevils have eaten the rungs, the hinges are rotting with rust. In this wetland, over 500,000 animals have their feeding and breeding place. Thus, it is the largest nesting site in northern and western Australia and a major stop for migratory birds from the northern hemisphere. The pigs roam at large, but they come home at night and sleep head and tail by the door. And sometimes a sow has a litter of pigs that sleep with her under the floor. They suckle and squabble around her all night. The odors arise. On the beach, you will find an incredible variety of shells of all colors and shapes. Some seem to be almost extraterrestrial as they glide weightlessly through the sand. And on the calves is as big as a plate It looks like a slash or a whale And sometimes it reaches from shoulder to hip Sometimes it reaches the tail It was made from the side of a square iron tank Cut out with a chisel or file It's not very neat but it might have been worse, says Waylon of waiting a while. The boys and the girls all at riding excel. They stick to a saddle like glue and follow a bullock through low mulga scrub as straight as a die and as true. They're no good at figures and can't read at all. In an elegant style We'll give them a bit of schooling someday Says Waylon of waiting a while The tanks and the dams very seldom get full No matter how heavy it rains They've a halo of bones of the sheep that have bogged And the dust storms have silted the drains Storm water is wasted and sweeps down the flat, a flood that would fill up the Nile. With a suitable vehicle, you can drive along the beach. For this snake, it was not so good. The sulky and buggy stand out in the sun. The woodwork is gaping with cracks. The leather is wrinkled and perishing fast and pulling away from the tax. The wheels are all loose and the paint's falling off and the cushions of long... The beach leads down slowly and the tide pulls back the water for miles. And the sunsets at the 80 miles beach are just wonderful. Good luck to old Waylon of waiting a while. He'll live just as long as the rest. 
and smile at the things that make most people frown and his health is as good as the best good luck to the mother at waiting a while who waddles along with a smile she'll have a fine time when the good seasons come and she doesn't mind waiting a while The next morning we leave this paradise and drive to Port Hedland. The place was named after Peter Hedland, who reached the place in 1863 as captain of the mystery. 1960 huge iron ore deposits were discovered, which gave the city an enormous increase in population. Here the trains passing the mining company BHP transport the ore from the site to the port and are among the longest and heaviest in the world. With 682 wagons pulled by eight locomotives, a length of 7.4 kilometers and a gross weight of almost 100,000 tons, one of these mega trains is in the Guinness Book of Records. We leave the coast and head straight south into the center of the Pilbara region. The former Hammersley Range is with 627 square kilometers the second largest national park in Western Australia. In 1991 he was named to the insistence of the Aborigines living in the park in Karigini National Park. At first view, the landscape is as a flat hot plateau. But if you look closely, suddenly deep gorges open and clean rivers form small paradises. At the entrance to the Dales Gorge, the Fortescue Falls are gushing down over the rock steps. A shady path leads along the stream through the gorge. At the end we reach the circular pool, a source of a special kind. It is a magical place, surrounded by a tall circular rock wall with water trickling out of numerous cracks and crevices. Another magical place in the Dales Gorge is the Fern Pool. The lake is for the local Aboriginal people a holy site.
Another impressive gorge near the 100 meter high Joffre Falls seems like an amphitheater. The water meanders down the steep wall and forms on the base small lakes. Dream time gazing. See that man. Paint box open. A brush in. A little further on Ox's lookout, you are standing on a crossing of not less than four canyons. The Red Gorge, the Wiano Gorge, the Joffre Gorge and Hancock Gorge. Here starts a walking trail for which you should bring the appropriate clothing, bathing suits. Upcoming doubts about the right way, oncoming hikers will help you. A sign recommends the so-called spider walk. At the end of the trail we enjoy a fantastic view. The canyon walls glow in the incident sunlight in all shades of red. From here you need a rope. Back on the paved road, we come to a remarkable memorial. The miners of the surrounding mines inscribed and piled stones for injured miners and family members. Hundreds of inscriptions recall us that the mine working is still a dangerous profession in Australia too. Soon we reach the highway number one again and we will meet the Indian Ocean in Exmouth. In addition to the Great Barrier Reef in the east, here is a second Australian diving and snorkeling paradise, the Ningaloo Reef. It covers only one-eighth of this surface, but in contrast to its big brother, to which you have to go out far, it reaches up to 200 meters to the shore and you can swim. 
In the crystal clear turquoise waters romp over 500 fish and 220 species of corals. Further out there are manatees, whale sharks, dolphins, turtles, manta rays and even humpback whales in the Australian winter. The latter can sometimes even watch from the shore. The Cape Range National Park runs along the west coast of the peninsula along to the south. The paved road ends at the mouth of the Yadi Creek. Girls in bottles, pushes and hands. Roses bloom from my finger bones. On the way back to the campsite, we will get a small lesson from the inventors of kickboxing. The big red kangaroo is an emblem of Australia. In this way, it contributes a dispute with the competitor. I found that living was easy enough. Now I am less than half the man I know. The fiddles fail, the candles die. The wine of my blood pours thick and slow. Sand ebbs out. Shortly after, we meet the second animal from the coat of arms of the fifth continent. The emu is the largest bird in Australia and, after the African ostrich, the second largest in the world. When I was twice the man I am I spring healed all the seas and stones Anyone who thinks the sunsets from the 80 miles beach could not be topped is here disabused. Sparkling clean, waterless, orderless and not to be complained environmentally, the bush toilet Earthbush Loo near Exmouth including the user manual. The town of Exmouth, with its 2,400 inhabitants at present, was not originally founded for tourists. In the 60s, an American military base was here and on the base the biggest long-wave transmitters in the world, which was used to communicate with submarines. Thirteen poles, up to 387 meters high, 
covering an area with a diameter of 2.5 kilometers. From the beach you can see a submarine wreck, or at least what's left of it yet. It was used for decades as a target for American pilot shooting practice. Several daily tours for whale watching depart in Exmouth. There are humpback whales in the bay and we want to see these amazing animals very close. Humpback whales belong to the Belines and are with a length of 12 to 15 meters relatively small for this kind. Their weight is 25 to 30 tons. When the winter comes, they leave their summer quarters in the polar seas and pull back into tropical and subtropical waters. Acrobatic jumps and clapping with the pectoral fin on the water surface is characteristic for them. Their flippers are far bigger than all other whales, reaching nearly one third of the body length and can be up to five meters long. The whale got its name due to his diving behavior. While diving, he forms a hump. The dives usually last three to nine minutes and depend on the food density. Its food consists mainly of krill, sometimes also from fish. They eat only in their summer quarters. In winter, the whales live off their fat reserves. Humpback whales are well known for their multifaceted vocals, given underwater especially by male animals. With a volume of 190 decibels, it is among the loudest calls in the animal kingdom. There's a train moving out of the station And it's bound for the town where I was born Past the shunting track, through the city black The cramped compartment stretches wide and gives a yawn Then we've reached the mountains and we slow forward the west coast of Australia is reached. From now on, we follow straight to the south. We cross the Tropic of Capricorn. It's still a little bit early, but from August to November, large parts of Western Australia turn it into a wildflower paradise. Then there sprout over 12,000 kinds of flowers on the white plains. In Carnarvon, with 6,800 inhabitants, the capital of the Gascoigne region, time seems to have stood still. The town used to be a port and a supply depot for the surrounding sheep stations and was named after the British Foreign Secretary, Lord Carnarvon. In the Jetty Train Museum you can admire many relics of the past. He's a dancer too. Watch him drift now across the sky Then we're into the town just past the railway tank Since the sea drops quite shallow, a jetty was built in 1904, reaching one and a half kilometer into the bay. A miniature railway takes visitors today, as in the past, out to the adventurous design. Everlasting's wink, Major Mitchell's drink. The bush is soft and still in the morning rain. The hours drift on by like clouds across the sky. I close the book. Play. There's a train. 
But the ravages of time and the breakers gnaws incessantly at the pillars. Into the town where I was born There's my mum and dad Come to greet their lad A hug and a handshake And I'm home once more In the center, a mural records the past glory once again to mind. Shark Bay named William Dampire the formation of the coast when he sailed here in 1699. Because of their unique life and natural forms, the Shark Bay in 1991 was appointed as the first region in Western Australia to the UNESCO World Heritage Area. Of the approximately 600 dolphins that live in the bay, scientists can identify 450 of them by their dorsal fin. The tourist attraction here is the place Monkey Maya. In the 60s, fishermen began to feed dolphins, but everything else as humanely. This daily ritual have passed on the animal mothers to their offspring, and it is still practiced today. Nevertheless, much has changed. Feeding is only two times in the morning and will be monitored by rangers. The animals may not be petted to prevent diseases to them. Although the mothers bring their young to the beach, these are consistently excluded from the feedings to obtain their hunting instinct. The male dolphins are also based on empty and it is controlled very careful that the distribution among females is handled fairly. Suddenly to be John Benbow walking down William Street with a tin trunk and a five pound note looking for a place to eat. Fried potatoes, God save us if you feel inclined. Kissing the landlady's daughter when there's no one there to mind. In a peel paper bedroom with a whistling jet and a picture of the holy. Bird. 26 kilometers away from Monkey Maya, there is the little village of Denham the most western point of Australia. Worth to see is the St. Andrew's Church, completely built up with shell blocks from the near Shell Beach. The Shell Beach is one of only two beaches in the world 
that are not made of sand, but of innumerable tiny white shells. The little cockles of the art Fragum erugatum are very common before the local coast and have been washed ashore within millennia and were deposited in a 10 meter deep layer and on a coastline of 110 kilometers length. Incoming rain has cemented the shells over the time. Under the loose surface, the ground is as hard as concrete. Limestone was formerly broken from that and used as building material for houses. Less than 60 kilometers to get to the old Hamelin Pool telegraph station from 1884. It was one of 38 stations which connected once the town of Albany in the south with Windham in the north. On the side here, there are beside testimonials of former times also an old shell quarry showing us the production of blocks. But Hamelin Pool Nature Reserve offers another attraction in this remote area of the continent. The oldest form of life on Earth. Stromatolites, the living rocks, are cold. They consist of cyanobacteria, which was formerly known as blue-green algae and the only visible under the microscope. Up to 3 billion microorganisms live per square meter. They process sediments from the very salty seawater here to rocky spears and black mats that grow very slowly, up to an inch in 30 years. Three billion years ago, the stromatolites radically changed life on Earth by releasing oxygen in the oxygen-free atmosphere. This was a poison for the former ways of life and many died from then. Until 700 million years ago, stromatolites dominated life on Earth, then spread was reduced continuously. Today you can find live specimens only rarely. Amy Irwin, she's a fair one, she's the girl for me. I'm as free as an old bush tree with Amy Irwin on my knee. And I'm her Johnny, her darling Johnny, and she loves me so. Hand in hand, oh, ain't life grand, through the years our love will grow. The Calberry National Park is located 250 kilometers south of Hamelin Pool and consists of two different landscapes. In the north he protects the lower Merchinson River, which has cut into a red and white canyon over a length of 80 kilometers. The formation of red and white sand, which was deposited in layers 400 million years ago, is called Tamblaguda sandstone. The town of Calvary is located on the distinctive bend of the Murchison River. It is a very young city, founded in 1951, and with its rear-round mild climate attracts many tourists. On Chinaman Lookout you have a spectacular view over the estuary and the waves of the Indian Ocean. One quiet evening with the sun slung low We'll walk across this plain Nowhere to go Put loose and fancy We'll take the trail And follow any track Ride any rail Somewhere untroubled 
by starlit sky We'll pitch a tent for two And there we'll lie Campfire blazing The bush all around A night bird's lonely cry The only sound And in the morning in the cold bush air, we'll down our billy tea and head The pink cockatoo is widely spread in Australia, and in many places even a pest. There seems to be a general assembly of the local population on the campsite in the evening. South of Calgary, the lower part of the national park protects the wild cliff landscape. The rocks have names like Red Bluff, Mushroom Rock and Rainbow Valley. The rock walls are interspersed by layers that glow in many colors. But in the dark he drinks the dew Beneath the stare of Sirius From his shoulder drops the swag The shearer lee the tether Through the cruel stumbling day Drove all his bones together The load too heavy to be borne He cursed it in the swelter But now unfolds with humble hands Lies within its shelter A pine cone lizard is sunning itself on the road. It belongs to the family of the skinks, a reptile species that occurs frequently in Western Australia. Skinks feed on mainly plants and fruit, but also eat snails, insects and worms. The fat tail serves as a fat storage for the dry summer. The animals are quite sluggish, you can approach them easily. Unfortunately, this low flight inclination brings disaster to many lizards on the road, especially their drawing is hardly to see on the asphalt. Stuffed with pudding to his gizzard, Uncle James lets out a snore. Auntie Flo sprawls like a lizard on the back veranda floor. Grandpa Orb. On the way we pass the Hut Lagoon, also known as the Pink Lake. Its color is caused by hollow bacteria. Near Northampton we come again to Highway 1. The occupation of the village started in 1840 and soon afterwards the first lead mine of Australia was founded nearby. The little town offers still some historic buildings. Below the shed 
In the scrub the cows are drowsing, dogs are dreaming in the shade. Fat and white, the mare is browsing, cropping slowly laid by... Geraldton, the greatest city in the Central West, had its heydays in the 1890s. The gold rush broke out in the Murchison region and the finds were shipped in the local harbour. The character of the landscape has changed in the meantime. The dry and empty desert landscape of the north is now replaced by green agricultural land. And the weather is not sunny and dry, but cloudy, foggy and wet. We arrived in the Nambang National Park in the Pinnacle Desert, the probably biggest tourist attraction between Perth and Carnarvon. In the only four square kilometers of Dunes Bazaar, weathered limestone pillars rise from the sand up to four meters high. The stone monuments were created a few hundred thousand years by vegetation on a sand dune. Their roots dug deeply into the underlying Tamala limestone layer, where the solidified stone solidified particularly because the roots vacuumed up a lot of water. As the dune moved on, the limestone stayed behind was removed by erosion. Only the extremely hard areas of the former plant roots survived the centuries and stand today as pinnacles in the sky. Takes her by the open door, the orange tree has bloomed once more. Soon her mind. Another day should be done will fill the room like the midday sun. Another historical place is located on our route to Perth. 1836, George Fletcher Moore reached this point and recorded the Aboriginal name Jinjin on his card. The city of Jinjin was founded here in 1883. Through the almost European-looking landscape, we approach our final destination in Western Australia, the Yanshap National Park. It lies just 42 kilometers north of Perth, was founded in 1957 and covers an area of 28 square kilometers. Here we can expect an encounter with which we didn't expect in this part of Australia, a koala colony. Traveled around country and town, there are few places I haven't been. Only one dear old Silverton, the best town I've ever seen. Now Colin, Rory, Dennis McLeod, owner of a deep dub. There's a welcome for strangers in the barrier ranges and it's called the Silverton Pub. I've watched Black Hill Creek as it flowed for a week and I've seen Umber Umber the cute bag bears are very selective about what effects to their food. They eat almost exclusively the leaves of certain eucalyptus trees, 
and their range is normally located in the east of the continent. Seen the camel camp near Penrose Park and I've been down daydream mine. Sat in a cell at Silverton Jail, the kids nearly left me behind. Come on, now Colin, Rory, Ellis McLeod, owner rubber dee dub. There's a welcome for strangers in the barrier ranges and it's called the Silverton Pub. And charities run the general store, they've both got The koala is next to the kangaroo the most famous symbol of Australia. The name has its roots from the Aboriginal language and means does not drink. In fact, the bears drink very rarely. They cover their water needs from the eucalyptus leaves. They are nocturnal and sleep in order to save energy up to 20 hours a day. Early in the 20th century, they were hunted for their fur and exterminated in many areas of Australia. The mass shooting led to public protests and 1937 the bears were declared a protected species in whole Australia. Today there is an estimated population of 45,000 to 80,000 animals. By destruction of their habitats and due to accidents in urban areas, their population remains fragile. One can only hope that despite the dangers to which they are exposed by the people, the bears from down under will stay for a long time with us. I've stood on a rise, seen the endless sweep of the Monday, Monday plain. There's nothing to compare with the wind in your head, the patter of the Silverton rain. Now Colin, Rory, Ennis McLeod, own a rubber dee dub. There's a welcome for strangers in the barrier ranges and it's called the Silverton pub. I've sat in the bar and I've listened to yarns and I've sung the odd ballad or two. I've sailed through jokes and tobacco smoke. It was good to be part of that crew. Now Colin, Rory and Dennis McLeod own a rubber dee dub. There's a welcome for strangers in the barrier ranges and it's called the Silverton Pub. Now Colin, Rory and Dennis McLeod own a rubber dee dub. There's a welcome to strangers in the barrier ranges and it's called the Silverton Pub. In Perth, our journey finds an end. What remains are a wealth of impressions and the strong desire to come back again into the wild west of Australia.